our lead into this uh, this live stream was about getting some viewer comments as to whether or not college football was worth watching anymore because of all of the drama and all of the chaos that's been going on. We pulled a viewer comment from our HRH 2025 asking and, and talking about they're, they're sick of college football. He says, I'm almost as sick of college football as I am pro football. It won't be long until I don't watch either. And then, Mac, and, you must have posted this one. So both Mac and I will comment from the Team Rivalry page. And we said, oh, man, but the on-field product is still pretty good. And then the drama is pushing me away. The corruption is getting worse. The next reply was, I'm with you. I don't want this NFL light that uh, college football seems to want to be. It's not really even the, the quality of the football being played. College football used to be soldiers fighting for their schools. Nowadays, everybody is a mercenary and the school is just a placeholder. And then this one is me. That's why you have to stick with us because we have no problem making fun of millionaire coaches. And we love the, uh, the old school rivalries. And then finally, the reply there, it just seems that anytime money becomes involved in sports to this degree, things get corrupted and start going downhill. I agree that players should get help financially, but this is ridiculous. So here we are. Yeah. And and this isn't the only comment that, that was uh, – bringing this up college football. And, and as we've talked about the, uh, the conference realignments, the NIL, the whole reason Nick Saban retired, not the whole reason, part of the reason Nick Saban retired seems to have something to do with NIL or does have something to do with NIL. PJ Fleck is raising the alarm on NIL and, and other coaches have too. So the question is, we, we can't do anything about it as, as fans, and, and I don't just mean me and Mac. I mean, none of us can do anything about it. So if we love college football in here, and, and the reason we call our channel Team Rivalry, the reason our website is Team Rivalry is because we love the rivalries. We love the the old school um, uh, pageantry, the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the little brown jug, uh, the Paul Bunyan trophy, Paul Bunyan's axe, all of these different rivalries that happen are just cool. It's just fun to, to look at them and, and see the trophies get passed back and forth, see the teams play for the trophies, see some of the, the, the on-field traditions. That's all what makes college football cool. And what we want to do here is kind of keep that alive. But I guess the question is, how, how do we do that? What, Mac, do you think we can just, if we just keep talking about it and keep, keep focusing on the, on the fun side of football, can we, I don't know, overlook the drama and the chaos that's going on? I mean, that, that drama and, and chaos is going to be in your face no matter what. I mean, yeah. players, players are going to transfer. It's going to be because of money. If we, that's what Ohio State did. Ohio State got they're basically their entire roster, not entirely, but ba they, they yeah. spent what $20 million to buy a bunch of mercenaries to try and take down Michigan. To me, if I'm an Ohio state fan, I'm wondering, and I'm not, cause that's gross. But <laughs> if I were, I'm kind of wondering at this point, how many of these kids are here because they want to be at Ohio state and they want to take down Michigan, which is what, I would want if I were dumb enough to be an Ohio state fan, but now you've got to worry about, was that too mean? Sorry. But it, anyway, <laughs> I'm not sorry. Um, <laughs> if, but what, but what if those kids are actually just there because they, because Ohio state offered them a bigger paycheck and, yeah. and Michigan fans have to worry about that too. What if, what if Michigan's going to start bringing in players because they get a bigger paycheck at Michigan? I can't imagine that'll ever be the case because Michigan is, obviously way behind in NIL right now. And, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that means that we keep getting the players, the high character players that just want to play like we were talking about before. But I, look, I, I don't care. Well, I shouldn't say that. I care what's happening off the field because it kind of sucks. You kind of wonder, are these kids in it for the same reason why I'm a fan? You know, I want Michigan to do well. The kid that that gets a, a $2 million paycheck to come play for Michigan to beat Ohio State, he's going to get his $2 million whether or not they beat Ohio State. 
So that, that would be sad to think that he doesn't care about Michigan the same way that I do. That being said, as soon as the ball is kicked off, that is not what I'm thinking about. As soon as the ball is kicked off, I'm thinking, all right, here's a game. Win the game. <laughs> Please win the game. <laughs> yeah, there's going to come a point where it's like, you know, maybe they start losing games because these players just want the money and they don't really care about playing. I don't know. I mean, football is a hard sport. You got to play basically all your life to make it to college. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that a lot of those players are actually the type of people that would just be like, oh, I can make millions of dollars playing in college. So I guess I'll just do that over getting a degree or a real job or whatever. I feel like they're, they are people who have devoted their lives to football. So as much as the money is there, I feel like there are still people that are going to want to be a part of football because of what football means to us. So I, I have hope. I do have hope. But of course, you're going to have the Ohio States, the Georgias, and those other teams that are just doing everything they can to, to pay players and bring them in just so that they can have their all-star team because the coach is on the hot seat and needs to beat this one particular team so that the fan base will get off his back. <laughs> You're kind of introducing yeah. another level of the, of the rivalry there though, too, you know, because think about it this way, Michigan is the team that brought its players back because they wanted to come back. Ohio state is the team that had to go down to sec country and tempt a whole bunch of players with six figure paychecks to get them to come up to Columbus and play. Right. So who wins? That's just how I see it. I'm not concerned about the on-field. Well, maybe a little bit concerned, but right now I'm I'm fairly hopeful that the on-field product is going to be okay. And right now yeah. I think that this whole thing is worth the drama. I'm honestly yeah. just excited to see how it all plays out. I think it'll be a glorious mess. And I can promise everybody too, when, when we get to the fall games, um, Mac and I will be talking about rivalries and, and championships and traditions and trophies and all of that. So, Yes. That's what we like to stick to. We, we don't, I mean, we're getting into the drama now because it's off season and, and news stuff to talk about, but when it comes to the games, we're all about the rivalries and stuff and making this fun to talk about. So stick with us for that. You said the O word. What? Off season. Off season. There well, is no off season. And we, well, but Ohio state just won the off season championship. So. No, but they had to vacate it because they committed level three recruiting violations. Oh, that's, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's too bad. Yeah, it's too bad. It sucks for them. <laughs> Antoine says, I agree these kids are turning into mercenaries. That's why I think Michigan should raise the base salary of players. And if you get a starting position, you get a chance for more money and NIL deals. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that could be, well, just like anything else, that could have the opposite effect of instead of encouraging them, you get the same thing like we talked about with Alabama, that all of a sudden the players are more interested. They want the starting position for the money rather than being better. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the players. Like you were saying, it depends on if you get players of character or not. Right, yeah. Antoine follows that up. Uh, this way you can keep the culture and form a hard work ethic. I don't agree with them just handing out money from unproven high school players. Also, you give it to the people who've proven themselves. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, Agreed. that's what I'm saying. That's, that's yeah. why Michigan, I think did it right with the one more year fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Robert and Juliana Nellett. I don't know if we're talking to Robert or Juliana, but either way. Hello. Uh, they say, how can the academic aspect of college be a problem? It's supposed to be the primary reason they're at the school. Yes. Michigan is an educational institute. Only a small percentage gone to the NFL. Yes, that is absolutely mm -hmm. true. And that's one of the heartaches of, like you said, Mac, you've got to play your entire life to get to a D1 school to play football. Mm -hmm. And if you've been doing that your entire life, you obviously want to go into the NFL or your parents want you to go to the NFL. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and let's face it, there's, I mean... You've got what seventy-five players per team in college, and you've got one hundred and thirty-three. I, well, I think it's over a hundred. Is it over a hundred? Seventy-five dressed, I guess. Oh, okay. 
So let's just do a quick calculation here. Let's let's say it's 100 times 133 is 13,300 players. Jeez. So how many players are on, in the, on an NFL team? 53. And that 53. sucks because okay. I was actually going to say 53, but then I questioned myself. I so then not... you're more down to like 1,600. It's yeah. like two or 300 actually make it through the draft. So yeah, that's... And that was always part of the problem, too, is you've got all of these players dedicating their lives to football, not getting to the NFL, not getting paid as players. And so now they've got to probably go back to college because they've probably just gotten a, a general education degree or a some degree that's easy to get. Yeah, that isn't going to get them anywhere. Um, and then they have to go back and redo that or, or something. That was sort of part of the reason that NIL made sense is because it gave these guys another opportunity. Yeah. Okay. But what, it, what about like in the case of Xavier Worthy? So U of M admissions kind of leads them on for a little while and then says all of a sudden, sorry, we can't admit him. Mm -hmm. And then he has to go to Texas. So they could have just brought him to Michigan and gave him the tutors that the athletic department, I mean, there are tutors that they have for football teams and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So they could have made it work. Yeah. And they just, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand but, it. I got denied from Michigan. So, <laughs> but Robert and Juliana here are right. It's theoretically and, and well, not even theoretically when you go to college, it's supposed to be about getting an education sports should be second. Yeah. We're at a point and we've been at a point where kids have been going to college football to play college football just so they can get to the NFL, just so they can get to the NFL. And as we said, out of the 13,000 kids that are playing at any given time, only two or 300 of them are going to go into the, into potentially the go to yeah. the NFL. Right. So that's fair. Yeah. How do we, how do we throttle this back? Or is that just, is that even possible to throttle this back to making the education the important part. It's like Cardell Jones said, I, they didn't go to get, go to school or go to, <laughs> he didn't go to Ohio state to play school or something like that. Yeah. So I don't think that any, I don't know. It comes down to the player. There are players that are excited about their education. And then there are other players that don't go to Ohio state to play school. Mm -hmm. And and that's not a knock on Ohio State. That was just something I think Cardell Jones said. There are plenty of Michigan players that cut class. Tate Forcier actually became uh, academically ineligible because he was couldn't play in the bowl game. Yeah, because of things like this. So yeah, so it it I don't know. It just it comes down to the person. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there's a way to really fix that. Yeah, I'm gonna skip down here. What does Buckeye oh, Valkyrie awesome. say? It's a new era, and it's kind of sickening, to be honest, but teams teams, teams must adapt, and I think Clemson won't <laughs> and still fall behind. Hey, Michigan correct. and Ohio State fans joined in our hatred for Clemson. <laughs> <laughs> we all hate Clemson. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, and this is what we've been talking about. It, it's a new era, and whether we like it or not, this is what it is now, and College football is the NFL minor leagues. Now it's just a matter of dividing it up into its own segments and um, seeing what shakes out from there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think we've covered it. I just. I'm... Yeah. It, this is just that's the, that's what it is now is it's. Yeah. It, but it's been the minor leagues for a little while now, too. So it's yeah. not like that new it's just way more out in the open right Antoine says Michigan should also show the difference between a student that went on the fast track of money and their route of long development and an education most of these athletes flame out with nothing to show yep that is correct and that's the problem yeah put some examples out I, there so so these kids can see you might not make it to the NFL and if that's, that's the case make sure your education counts that's on Which, the clear too though right that, and isn't that, just, yeah. isn't that what Hoke said too, that um, they were getting on Hoke's case. Okay. So they were getting on Hoke's case for losing, 
But then Hoke had pointed out that they had, in his classes, they had, what, like a 95% graduation rate? And he said, I kind of thought that was the point. Yes. So we had that at one point and not too long ago, but. Right. Well, but yeah. That, yeah, that was the crappy thing is that they were actually getting on his case for a high graduation rate at one point. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> but I was going to say that comes down to the player. I mean, they're, the, the player needs to be smart, too. And I, they need counselors and stuff like that at the school to be like, OK, look, you know, you need a backup plan just in case you don't make it to the NFL, because a lot of these 18, 19 year old kids are going to come into college like, no, it's all good, man. I'm going to make it to the NFL. And you know, make millions of dollars. And yeah, you might, but what are you going to do if you don't? That's not the school's fault. And that's not Michigan's admissions fault. That's mm -hmm. the player. If the school wanted to cover their butt, then they could hire counselors and have them counsel the kids. So Buckeyes Battle Cry says, shoot, even the people who make it big fall out with no savings. Adrian Peterson, anyone? I had to yes. look up who Adrian. Do you know who Adrian Peterson is? Yeah, he was a running back for the uh, Vikings for a little bit. He I, he played for others, too. I can't remember who. From 2007 to 2023. I mean, he had 16 years. I wonder. He just declared uh, bankruptcy? <laughs> oh, man. Did he really? Okay. Jeez. Well, and that's not uncommon, really. I, I guess I didn't, uh, I didn't remember who Adrian Peterson was, so I, I wasn't sure of his story. But that does happen where these guys yeah. start out with – millions and then who was talking about that i think that was um mitch album mm -hmm. uh detroit uh radio show host at wjr uh talking about these players start out with millions of dollars and end up broke because nobody teaches them how to manage money they're yeah. just throwing millions of dollars at their faces and and they're doing this to guys who are older than college players and so now the that's one of the concerns now you're throwing millions of dollars at college players you think they know how to handle money any better than these other guys did no sam hartman's looking downfield for adrian oh! Oh! Carter almost has a one-handed catch almost oh, 